Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Saved. Written by Algy Father Anthracite. Tired. I was so tired. Why was it so cold in here? I open my eyes and I see a bridge of the ship. Not the usual orderly bridge that I'm used to. The consoles are all dark. No one else is in the room. The red emergency lights are flickering on and off. Light. I remember now a hull breach. I had ordered everyone else to evacuate. I must be trying to get up to the comms. I needed... I needed to send out an emergency beacon so uh, so my crew could be re-rescued. Why were the comms so far away? I drag myself across the floor of the bridge. After a few minutes, the cold gets worse. I look at the comms console. I'm nearly there, just a few more feet. But I just need to rest for a minute. I'm so cold. What was I doing? The beacon, right? I need to make sure my crew gets rescued. Why do my legs hurt so bad? I pull myself up to the edge of the console and reach over to what feels like miles of buttons and switches. I hit the button and I see a confirmation light go on. My crew is safe. The ship's quantum entangle comms will ensure the rescue comes. Not the simple beacon of the rescue pod. This was instant and transmitted location data. I'm tired and my, my crew is safe. I need sleep. I close my eyes. Time to sleep. It's so cold. Why is it so cold? And why do my legs hurt? Can't sleep. Need to get to the med bay. Need to check my legs. This might be bad. My legs hurt and they aren't working. Where is everyone? Med bay. Get to med bay. Just let me sleep first. Can't sleep. Too cold. Legs hurt too bad. Crawl to med bay. Crossing the bridge. Why is there so much blood smeared across the floor? I get to the blasters. I want sleep. My legs hurt so bad right now. I open the doors and head down the hall. It's so cold out here. Why do my legs hurt? I'm so tired. I, I want to sleep. Why is the hallway so goddamn long? Med bay. Blast doors. Finally got them open. My legs hurt really bad. I'm crying like a kid. The cold isn't helping the pain in my legs. I pull my way along the floor. Dog pod is there. Once I get in, it'll fix my legs. I can't sleep. Crawl up to the side of the pod. Legs hurt so bad I scream. I scream again when I roll into the pod, still crying like a kid. I'm so cold, so tired. I hit the button and the pod closes up. I sleep. Play audio file rescue pod 12 kingfisher dot flak. First mate Gertie King emergency log entry 1. The ship was struck by some sort of object, most likely a small asteroid. It breached the hull along with three bulkhead compartments and we lost all but the barest of life support. Captain Mars called for a full evac. He was heading to the bridge when the, um, when the blast or malfunctioned. I was the second to last off the ship and already sealed it when it had happened. I saw uh, I saw his foot laying in the hall. I don't think that he could have made it to the bridge, which means unless there is a ship within a few trillion miles of here, we won't be rescued anytime soon. I had made contact with the other pods and found that aside from the captain, everyone made it off the ship. I told them what I saw, told them to ration their supplies as long as possible. Hopefully, we get rescued before we starve. King out. End of audio file. 
Sir, I have an emergency beacon coming in along the quantum line. Its commercial freighter automated data packet indicates a catastrophic hull breach. It appears the crew evac before the message was sent. Location data was verified. Confirm ship ID is registered and scramble the emergency rescue and salvage teams. If ID is confirmed, they are clear to launch and make immediate jump to rescue location. Aye, sir. Scrambling the rescue and salvage teams, ship's ID is confirmed, clearing the launch and transmitting jump coordinates. Good work, son. Let's bring them home. Johnson, you're not gonna believe this. The guy is alive. The hell you say? He crawled up from the bridge to the medbay and got into the dock pod. It stabilized him and put him in cryo. Why were you looking in the medbay? Followed the blood trail, this guy dragged himself about 300 yards up and down the ship in low oxygen. He must be tougher than boot leather. Is that dock pod wired in? Yes, sir. Not a portable unit. Damn. Report back to the ship. We will tow her back to the station. We will leave as soon as you get back. Rescue gathered all the escape pods and ready. Gertie, how are you? Hey, now, uh, no need to cry. Everything's okay, girl. Mars, you're the only person in the spiral arm who could call me girl. Well, as my first mate, you're my girl Friday, right? What's wrong, Gert? I thought you were dead. I saw the door close in your legs, saw your foot laying there, and I thought that you were dead, and I was going to starve to death waiting for someone to rescue me. Come on, Gert. I might, uh, should have died, but there was no way I was going to let that happen to my crew. To you. Never. Not now. I heard they were growing you a new set of legs. Damn things itch too. It's like the worst cane of pins and needles ever. Mars, are you going back out there? Uh, I guess not. I can see by the look in your face that you would insist on coming with me. Maybe I should retire. I got a pretty nice compensation settlement from the company. Enough to buy a small place and maybe start a family. Start a family? With who? Come on, Gert. Who else? You'll always be my girl. What? Me? But, but... Come on, say yes, and save me from dying as a lonely old man. End of story. Story number two. How we win. Written by Ira Koza. Welcome, young aspiring officers of the great Kirsch domain. With the aid of your leadership, I believe the war with these, uh, humans shall be short-lived. The Karashana program has given unto us a distinct advantage over these humans, but that advantage is not guaranteed victory. Though primitive and possessing moderate intelligence, these humans are quite tenacious, bloodthirsty even. I warn every one of you in attendance, do not underestimate them. That being said, there are rules that you, as future officers, need to know. Whether you are destined for supply barges or frontline field commanders, admirals or wardens, every curse should know the rules of war. Knowing these rules means your comrades know what to expect, how you will act and give commands and know their jobs and how to do them. Practicing these rules will mean the optimization of our military force. This is our doctrine, gentlemen. This is how we fight the war. Be it this one against these humans or the next against an enemy only the spirits know of. Good. You all seem to understand. Bear in mind that this is doctrine may change as the nature of the war changes. As reflected by the latest rule, let the Kershano do the fighting. These are vac road beasts. They do not need to be the sympathies or charity. They are designed as cannon fodder and shock troopers. Some generals have expressed concern about allowing entire platoons of Kershano to be wiped out. Let me dispel this concern. The Kershano population is expendable. If the humans wipe out every last one, we will simply grow more. They have no souls. They have no right to life. We Kirsch made them. Their lives are forfeit. The next rule is to trust your numbers. Except under worst circumstances, you will outnumber the enemy as much as ten to one. Humans have powerful weapons, but our numbers will rule the day. Again, the Kirishano give you the advantage. Use them. 
It is an undeniable fact that human ships outgun our own. Never engage a capital ship head-on if you will always lose a head-to-head matchup. Humans rely too much on brute force. The biggest guns, the heaviest armor, the biggest ships. Unfortunately, this makes their capital ships almost unstoppable. But they are not maneuverable by any means. With the exception of the human battle cruisers, any of our ships can outmaneuver any human capital ship. Use this fact and swarm tactics to do damage to the human ships enough for them to retreat. Battles are fought over nothing, get us nowhere. Avoid skirmishes. Device of victory must be achieved to chase these human scum from our sovereign space. A victory here and there matters little when the complete destruction of your enemy can and will mean the end of the war on your front. You must use superior numbers to win this battle. Even so, sometimes this will not be enough. Be ruthless. Humans are a pox on this galaxy. If you have to, you are allowed to scorch planets, ignite atmospheres, detonating volcanoes, deorbiting moons. They're all viable tactics. However, we ask you to refrain from using these tactics when possible. These are a last resort. Many of the Kirsch have died to complacency. Never let your guard down. Humans are without honor. They will fight you wherever they see a chance, be it flying a nuclear bomb into your ship or ramming the feet with an overloaded battleship. Ace nothing out of human reach. They will fight dirty. They will find ways to kill you. And they will die if you do not let your guard down. Finally... There is the most important rule. It is easy to forget, but if you value victory, you will value your lives. You must never, under any circumstances, back a human into a corner. This is the only rule of our doctrine made specifically for humans, for they are the only ones that are relevant too. Where any other civilized creature would peacefully surrender when in an unwinnable situation. Humans, uh, humans, they uh, simply refuse reality. You can surround them, you can remove their ability to fight, and they'll still attack. They'll fight with an unrivaled bloodlust that only humans have. A determination that their lives will cost you everything. They will fight for nothing. Nothing but the satisfaction of knowing that they were an inconvenience for your day. Simply a chance to, in their own words, send us a final frick you. Do not let this unnerve you, however. The human sacrifice is vain and pointless at the end. Though it is better to deny the humans the satisfaction of martyrdom. The Kirsch will stand victorious at the end of this war. And humanity will in their turn be extinguished from the galaxy that we call home. The humans sat back, cocky smiles on their faces. That concludes today's special broadcast straight from our mall in the Kirsch High Command. To all those brave souls fighting of those thousand frontiers, humanity stands resolute. Good night, or good morning to some. We'll see you again tomorrow on the new Imperial Radio. The small radio clicked off and then shut itself off. The squadron of soldiers sitting around beamed with pride. Their job ship quaked as their air artillery blackened the armored hull. They were scared of us all the way to the top. They feared us. As those soldiers went into battle, they knew we had already won. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.